Uh, bonjour. That's as much uh, French I know, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, so my name is Andrea Frittoli. Thanks for being here today. Um, I'm an open source uh, developer advocate, not meaning I'm open source myself, but I work on open source project uh, for IBM. And I'm here today to talk to you about um, Knative and Tecton. So there was a session just before this one about Knative, I believe. I don't know how many of you will be there. So uh, we're, we're there, yeah, quite a few. So I will repeat a few things maybe, but um, then I'm going to talk more extensively about Tecton and how the two projects can integrate with each other. So just a little bit of history. Um, it was beginning of last year, 2019, when we started hearing about uh, Knative. Uh, so the, it's an open source project. Uh, it's made of three main components, build, eventing, and serving. There are a lot of contributors um, from uh, companies and independent as well. A lot of contributors come from Google, Pivotal, IBM, Red Hat, CloudBees, and other companies. It's an open source um, project, so it's backed by a community and it's organized uh, with a steering committee that uh, deals with uh, all the non-technical decisions across the various projects that are part of Knative. There is also a TOC, Technical Oversight Committee, which takes care of technical decision across the projects. Uh, and there are then dedicated working groups for different areas. Uh, some are specific to projects, some of specific to particular areas of some of the uh, Knative projects. Also, if you're thinking about contributing to Knative, there are, uh, like usual in OpenStack, different type of contributors profiles. So you start contributing, you can contribute in any way uh, with bugs, uh, documentation, comments, code, um, even uh, discussion in the mailing list or chat are always welcome. And of course, as the more you review code, the more you contribute, then you can become a committer and you know, gain the ability to approve other people's code and so forth. Um, design and issues are, uh, well, mostly done in the open on GitHub. Uh, so, um, and communication, it's handled with, uh, well, there are uh, periodic meetings, sometimes are weekly or bi-weekly, depending on the project. They are recorded, so you can go and, see and watch them afterwards. Um, and there is both asynchronous communication via the mailing list, even though they are not very active, to be honest, and a lot of synchronous communication in Slack. So um, I mentioned serving, um, eventing, and build just a few words about each of the projects. Serving, um, so Knative is, is a serverless uh, platform. Forgot to say that. So serving is the component that allows you uh, your workloads to scale down to zero, which is the, the serverless part. So of course there are serverless, there are servers there, uh, but um, if you're running a specific application and you're not, you don't have any traffic on it, you don't need to have any uh, pod scheduled for that application. And the serving component of Knative is what allows for that. It also allows to scale up automatically. With automatically, it means that there, there is a scheduler which it can be fed with metrics uh, of utilizations uh, of your service utilization in terms of requests. And then uh, the service can scale up and then scale down automatically once, uh, once the load goes down. If you don't want it to scale down to zero, you can configure it and say, go minimum to one, it will stay there. <coughs> so Knative defines a few abstractions. So one is called service, like the Kubernetes service. And uh, a service, uh, then uses a configuration. Configuration manages revisions. So revisions are snapshots of your code and configuration at a certain point in time. And these revisions are, ma are managed by the configuration abstraction. A root is an abstraction that allows you to point to root traffic to a specific revision, and the service manages them all. This kind of setup allows you to have multiple revision active at the same time, meaning that you can have multiple versions of your code and you can instruct Knative to distribute your traffic, for instance, 50% on revision A and 50% on revision B. So um, this is an application from the OpenStack community. Uh, it's a dashboard to show test results from CI jobs. And I just use this, I'm showing this because I use this application to make a small uh, demonstration and show you how 
uh, the serving and other components can work. So this was a, a normal service not running on Kubernetes and I, I made it as a Kubernetes uh, native service. So just show it to you. So I've got a cluster ready and Knative is deployed. Hopefully it's feasible. Um, and you can see uh, these are the Knative services that are defined in my dev namespace. So I have two namespaces. The application is made of three layers. One is the front-end layer, which is written in, in uh, JavaScript. Then there is a Python layer, which is the, the API. And then there is a database, which is hosted actually outside of the cluster. So um, I've got these two services. One is for the API and one is for the front-end. Um, and if you look at the pods in the same namespace, you can see that there are no pods in there. So. Let's start watching the pods and hopefully the demo gods will help me. And let's hit the front end. So if we go back to the, to the pods, you can see that the front end is coming up. And as soon as the front end is up and running, um, the graphs on it, it should start hitting the API, hopefully. Otherwise, I will just go on and show it later. OK, I guess network is not helping. Um, anyway, so the idea is that the, uh, the Knative uh, service compo serving component receives um, the API calls and sees that there are no uh, pods available for the revision, which is marked as a current revision, and brings up the, the pods with a revision that has been requested. OK, that didn't go well. Sorry about that. OK, let's move on. The second component of Knative is the eventing component. Um, the eventing component defines some abstractions that allow you to uh, define sources of new events, um, which are um, typically events that can uh, trigger um, a, service, a service to come up from zero and scale up. So, um, and other, uh, sorry, other abstractions uh, like the channel, which is where messages are delivered to, and then uh, are aggregated, and then they are delivered to a service via a subscription. So a subscription is the, the green triangle there. Uh, so the source um, and the channel abstraction are defined in a way that they are extensible. So this, they are abstract, and they can support multiple implementations. So the Knative uh, project defines a few sources uh, already. You have a GitHub source um, that triggers events every, every time a certain GitHub event is triggered. There is a Kubernetes event source, but it's possible to define as many sources as you want. Also, the channel abstraction supports multiple implementation. Um, existing implementations are one in memory channel, which uh, means that uh, if messages are delivered to the channel and you stop your channel, messages are lost. It's usually, usually used for development purposes. Um, other backends that are available for the channel are Kafka, and there are another few ones. They are all kind of in the prototyping state, so it's a relatively new project, uh, and it's possible to implement new channel uh, backends. The very latest uh, release of Knative Eventing is the 0 0.5. It was released uh, a few days ago, I believe. Uh, it introduced uh, some other abstractions, the broker uh, and the trigger, where the broker is a kind of a bucket for all events. The, all events can be collected in, in the broker. And the trigger 
um, allows you to define filters uh, where you can select which events out of the bucket shall be delivered to um, specific services. Again, a short demo. So um, the way the GitHub uh, source is, uh, is defined, when you create it, it will create, um, define a webhook um, on GitHub uh, side. And this uh, webhook goes and calls into my service running in my Knative uh, cluster, uh, my Kubernetes uh, cluster. So let's say I do some uh, small change to this repository. and I push the change. And then, I've got three services that are um, listening or connected to the channel which, is re uh, which are receiving this. If I look at the message damper, Okay, so here you can see it's not very nicely formatted, it's just an example, but you can see the GitHub event that was triggered. And uh, here you have the JSON with the entire uh, content that was basically passed to me by GitHub, which includes the details about the repository, where the change happened, and the GitHub of the change that was pushed there. Like this. So uh, this um, service that I just showed you, it's itself a Knative service, and the GitHub source itself is a Knative service. So all these services, they're not actually uh, consuming resources unless uh, they are, uh, there are events coming in. So if I push, when I push something to GitHub, then uh, the GitHub source service is pulled up. It receives the events and puts it into a channel and the channel then delivers it to my uh, message dumper service. The third component uh, of Knative is build. So build um, allows to implement the source to image experience. So um, if you're developing in Go or Python or whatever language that you prefer, um, you may want to, um, instead of uh, having to take care of uh, writing uh, the infrastructure to put your code into a Knative service, you may want to have a facility um, that allows you to start from the source code and get a running service. So the combination of build and, um, and the service component gives you similar type of experience. If you're familiar with other serverless, serverless platform like OpenWhisk, uh, in those platforms you can just uh, put your code, your module into the platform and they will take care of everything. This is a similar experience, but you have to specify a build. A build, uh, hopefully you can see in the YAML there, again is a Kubernetes abstraction or it's a CRD that allows you to define what um, how to transform your source code into a Docker image, which is pushed to a registry. Build uh, comes with build templates, which allows um, to define best practices on how to build your, your code. For instance, in this case, there is a build template which is called Canico, which uses a Canico builder to build a Docker uh, file into an image and push it into a registry. So in uh, 
the, the YAML that I'm showing here is actually the definition of a Knative service. And so the, the build itself is specified along with the service, and it's, it's instructing the service component, serving component, on how to build your code. So you, you basically, you tell uh, Knative serving, this is the build that you can use every time you want to create a new revision of my code, run this build, uh, and the build will go and fetch your code from Git, run Canico in this case, create uh, a new image and push it to, to the repository that you specified in this case is Docker. But um, what if you want to go farther and do something like this? So not only build your image, but maybe you want to run some unit tests, you want to run some linters on your test, or you may even want to go farther um, deploying a Kubernetes cluster, uh, build your images, deploy your images um, or your service in this new cluster and run end-to-end -end tests on, on against them. So um, this kind of uh, use case is what uh, brought to um, kind of towards the end of last year to the Knative uh, pipeline effort to be uh, start. So it was around September 2018 uh, and the project was started with the idea of uh, creating this uh, ability of making complex uh, pipelines of execution that lead to your service deployment. So in March this year, um, after a few months of development on pipeline, the project was kind of separated out of the Knative space. There was a decision to make it as an independent effort, which is called now Tecton, Tecton Pipelines. The focus of Tecton is uh, CI-CD pipelines, and the project is hosted uh, in the new, uh, newly created uh, Continuous Delivery uh, Foundation, which is part of the Linux Foundation, along with uh, Jenkins, Jenkins X, and Spinnaker, I believe. So it's a foundation that focuses on uh, continuous delivery project. The idea of Tecton is it will allow you to create, uh, it allows you to create pipelines that uh, help you deliver or deploy your uh, application and services anywhere, not necessarily on Knative or not even on Kubernetes. Even though uh, there is a certain uh, amount of compa compatibility that is maintained with Knative, I would say that Knative is still a kind of first class citizen for Tecton. There are um, special int specific integration that can be made between Tecton and Knative. And that is what I'm going to show you in the next few slides. So what is Tecton pipeline? So a pipeline is something like um, a cylinder, as you may expect. Um, it defines, it's defined as a combination of tasks. Tasks are represented here as green squares tasks uh, have inputs and outputs, and each task is made of steps. So all, most of these are represented here as different uh, shapes, are new uh, Kubernetes abstractions that are defined as part of the Tecton um, project. So the, the part above with pipeline and tasks and steps defines kind of the static um, structure of your pipeline. So you can say here, these are the kind of tasks that I want to do on my code. These are the kind of things that I want to run before uh, my pipeline is completed. I may want to do uh, some vulnerabil vulnerability assessment uh, or some testing, as I was saying before. The bottom part is kind of the runtime side of it. So you can define a pipeline and a task, but nothing will actually happen until you create a pipeline run which triggers your pipeline, or similarly a task run that triggers your task. Pipeline resources, I'll show them in a minute. There are um, resources that can be uh, bound to the pipeline or task as inputs and outputs of the, of the pipeline at runtime. So um, I showed here um, that a task can contain steps, can be made of steps. Steps are strictly exec executed sequentially. So if I have a task, something that I want to do, I can say, I want to run this series of steps that are executed sequentially. And um, they are implemented actually uh, as containers. And a single task uh, is implemented as a pod. So steps are multiple containers hosted in a single pod, which makes it so that uh, uh, all the steps are going to be 
executed on the same node because when uh, the pod is scheduled, it is scheduled on a certain node, and then all the containers that are part of that pod will be executed on, sa on the same node, which makes it possible then for uh, the different steps to share, uh, to easily share data between them because you can just mount a directory on your node and you don't need to push your data outside of your node to for, for the different step to share them. So the order uh, of the execution of tasks is not necessarily linear, so you can have tasks instead executed in parallel. Tasks are pods, so they, they can be scheduled on different, on different nodes in your cluster. And they can, they can share data, but they will do so uh, with different means. They can use a, a shared PVC or an object storage somewhere. Um, so the order of execution is defined by the dependency in terms of resources. So if you define in your pipeline that you have a certain amount of tasks with inputs and outputs, is a certain resource, um, is output of a task A and input of task B, then the, um, Tecton will take care that task B is only executed once, once the resource is generated by task A. This is an example of um, how a source to image task will look like. So at the end, again, it's a YAML file, and you, have, you can see hopefully there that you have an input section, you have an output section where you specify input and output resources, you can have parameters as well. And then you have the num a number of steps. In this case, just one step which invokes the Canico execut executor. The Canico executor will take the, the Git repository that was specified as an input resource and cloned already, and build uh, your Docker image and push it to the registry. A couple of words on Canico, since I mentioned it a couple of times. It's again, it's a project from um, Google. It has some nice uh, features, which uh, I like to use it because of those. Um, you can build, a similar to Docker, you can build starting from a Docker file and the context, but you can run your build unprivileged, so you don't need to have a privileged um, container to run your build. You can run reproducible builds, meaning you can decide to remove all the timestamps from the build uh, metadata so that the build is going to be identical if you repeat it again and again. You can have remote co caching of layers of your Docker file in your uh, container repository, which means if you're doing a very small change and if you structure your Docker file properly, then you're only going to touch probably the last layer of your Docker file. So everything, every other layer will be taken from your repository as a cache, and then uh, you, you have a quicker run. About the Docker file, um, when I started working on the uh, OpenStack Health, there were some Docker files available, but they were kind of um, very basic, and I experienced very long build times there. And every time I made a small change, there was a, a very, a very big build time. So, and the reason was that um, you have to put very much care when you build your Docker file in uh, putting last, for instance, uh, the parts that are going you're more likely to change more often so that you minimize the changes to your layers. So no tool can um, help you against a not properly written Docker file, so, to be honest. So, um, okay, so to coming back to pipeline and tasks and all the abstraction from Tecton, uh, they allow you to define basically your pipeline as code or as YAML files, which means uh, that you can define your pipeline um, along with your code and you can store it in Git. But you have to be careful about what, you, what you, you're putting in Git. So pipeline and task are static definition and they're okay to be stored in Git along with your code. Uh, things like pipeline runs and task runs are kind of runtime objects. So there are still CRDs in Kubernetes, but they are not reusable. So you only define them when you actually want to run a task or you want to run a pipeline. Um, resources, or pipeline resources, usually they contain things that are also run specific. Like I want to uh, build ver this specific version of this Git SHA of my application. So it's not something that you want to store in your Git repository. I've got some example of Git resources in this on this slide. Uh, one of the resources that you can define is a cluster resource. A cluster resource allows you to 
store credentials for a certain cluster. So you can have a pipeline which, um, I think, I believe it, I have it here, yes. So you build uh, your code, you build your images, you store them in a container repos repository, and then um, you use Helm, for instance, to deploy it against another cluster, and that's where the cluster resource helps you because you can store the credentials there for this task to take your code and build it against a cluster which is different from the one uh, where you're running uh, the pipeline itself. Okay, so, well, some more details, I guess I'll, I'll skip. I talked a, a bit about this already. Um, but um, maybe it's worth to mention um, four steps. I was saying they're basically containers and you can use most of the things that you can use normally in containers, so which means you can attach volumes uh, taken from secrets, from uh, config maps, so you can attach. You can do the, the usual things that uh, you can do with, a, with any, with any uh, pod. So I promised in the beginning um, that Tecton and Knative can work together. So I wanted to show a few examples here. Of interaction between Tecno Tecton and the survey component um, and Tecton and the eventing component. So starting with the serving, I showed in the beginning um, that you can um, include a build as part of a, of a service definition and you can instruct the Knative serving and say use this build object to create a new revision of my code. You can actually do the same uh, with Tecton. So you can use a pipeline run or a task run as part of your Knative service definition. And that means that every time that you um, refresh the definition of your service, Knative serving will automatically trigger the pipeline for you and run everything that is defined in your pipeline, no matter how complex your pipeline is. So in this example here, uh, it will run a um, free task, uh, a linter on your uh, JavaScript and uh, some testing, and then build an image. This is how it looks like. Again, you have a service definition in the YAML there. Um, and then um, in, this, in this spec, run, the run latest bit uh, means um, that Knative is going to direct all the traffic to this new revision if the revision is successful. I mentioned in the beginning that uh, with Knative serving, you can have multiple revision and you can separate the traffic between different revisions. Um, if you use the run latest uh, in your specification there, it means that um, Knative will trigger the pipeline. If the pipeline reaches the successful state, means meaning all the tasks in the pipeline are executed and all they uh, expose a uh, success uh, as a result, then um, Knative service, uh, serving will take uh, the resulting images and use them to create a new revision and it will create a new route and it will put 100% of the traffic coming in into the service to this new route, pointing to the new revision. So what about um, serving? Uh, sorry, eventing. Oh, actually, uh, I have a small demo here, sorry. Um, so. This is just a small uh, bash script. But what it does, it defines pipeline resources, one for Git and for images, and then it uses kubectl to apply a pipeline run uh, that uses those, those resources. So this is a manual trigger of a pipeline run. And if I show you the service definition, it's similar to what I showed you on, on the slide. So you have a service, and within the service, you have a pipeline run here that is defined as a tool that is used by serving to create a new revision. So if I run this, the only kubectl command here that is executed is the apply 
of the uh, service, k native service definition. But then if I go and look at everything which is tagged with this tag, you will be able to see that actually uh, what serving has done, it has triggered the pipeline. Right, uh, maybe I'll sorry about that. Hmm? I don't know what it is. Okay, sorry, in this case, it triggered two tasks. And the two tasks are running here. Or um, if I run it with a different parameter, it will trigger a pipeline. Again, if the network helps. <coughs> okay, there you go. Here you can see um, towards the bottom you have two pipeline run. Uh, one is for the front end and one is for the API that have been triggered. And there are several task runs. Some of are those that I triggered before manually and some are generated uh, associated to the pipeline run. Here are the pipeline resources that are associated to the different images for the front end and the back end and Git. And then you can also see here that you have the, the two services. These are the Canadian services, the configuration, um, and the <coughs> and these are the different tasks that are actually implemented as pods, so they are running uh, at the moment. So I'll let that run. I'll come back to it later. Um, in terms of integration between Technon and Knative eventing, so I like to talk about um, asynchronous pipelines. The nice thing about the pipeline is that um, it encapsulates um, the concept of being ready or completed, um, and it exposes it to your Kubernetes API. So you can have the controller taking care of making uh, that uh, all the tasks have been executed, they are completed, they are done, whether successful or not, combine all the states and give you a, a, a aggregated state whether your pipeline was successful or not, how long it took, and so forth. But there are some cases where you might not want this. You might want to have uh, pipelines which are actually decoupled. Like, uh, let's say that you are running some tests, and then you have the test results, and you want to do some post-processing on the test result, like inject them in a database where they show up in this dashboard that I was showing before, or you want to uh, read them and um, parse them and then publish them as a comment on GitHub to tell um, uh, the developer who made the pull request, so this is the result of your pipe of your tests. You don't want actually the part that part of the pipeline to affect the overall result of your test pipeline, because it might be that your tests were successful but because of any temporary condition. Uh, processing the test result is not working. You don't want that to um, affect the test result themselves. So there is a need for uh, asynchronous uh, decoupling here. And you, um, you can use um, Knative eventing for this. Uh, you could use um, things like GitHub sources uh, or container sources, and something which is, um, does not exist yet, but I think it would make sense to implement eventually is a pipeline output as a source to say, okay, a certain, um, the, f the, f the fact that a certain pipeline finished, uh, we consider it as an event that may trigger, uh, be transported over Knative eventing and then trigger a new pipeline execution. And it would be nice to have some uh, mechanism to uh, provide a shared state between the two pipelines automatically. For now, though, uh, there is only a manual trigger um, available. So what I did to show something more interesting, I implemented a small 
uh, glue application. This is just um, a small glue application. It's a single module. And what this does, um, it takes a cloud event, which is what you get out of the channel from uh, when a Git event is generated. Uh, it extracts some data out of it, like the, the Git uh, repository URL and the SHA. And then it uses the, the Tekton client to generate uh, your Git resource and your pipeline and so forth. So you can install this using Go, which if you are developing in Go is a nice tool because it takes care of um, automatically taking your Go code, building it, putting it in a Docker container without having you uh, to define your Docker container at all, and then it pushes the result. Well, it resolves um, the names into your manifest and then pushes the results the the images to the container registry and it um, and the manifest to your Kubernetes cluster. So um, to do okay, so it's also a native service, so it's not running at the moment. But if I do a change again to this repository. and push it. Never use force. So if I look at the pods, okay, here is the, serve the pod for the GitHub source um, that's coming up. And here is the Tecton glue is initializing at the moment. And if I look at the logs for that, it shows you, well, the entire event. So you should be able to see here, change for demo is the message that I used. And then um, it's processing it and it provisions resources and pipeline run, and you can actually go and watch this using the, the tag as a filter. So to summarize, I submitted a change uh, in my local repository, I pushed it on GitHub, I didn't use force, you didn't see that. Um, and then that triggered um, a webhook invocation on GitHub that went to the GitHub source. The GitHub source deposited a message in the channel. The channel was then, uh, for a subscription, delivered to my Glue service, and the Glue service uh, processed it and created uh, the two uh, pipeline runs that you can see there. So to conclude, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Tecton uh, in the context of the development workflow, CI and CD. So um, I used it uh, for a few months now, um, and I find it, uh, I, I like the fact that I can switch between my local my mini cube, or I can run it against my cluster uh, on IBM Cloud. Um, I like that I have a strong reproducibility because I'm always triggering the same pipeline, I know what's going on. And it's also the same things that I'm, uh, is going on in my CI or CD, because if I have the same task definition, I can use the same tasks in different, uh, in the development workflow and in the CI workflow and in the CD workflow, that I know that I, want, I will have less surprises if I run this task as part of my development workflow when I actually go and submit my code into the CI or CD environment. I also like that I can have parallel execution, so if I'm running multiple tests, and I'm building the image, I can do that in parallel. And if I do it on cluster, it doesn't affect my local laptop, so I can go on and do different things. 
even though uh, it is, uh, supports all these, still it can be slow. I mean, if there are, uh, depending on the language, uh, development uh, language that you're using, um, there are tools which allow you to a very instant response where you make a code change, you open your browser or you do some CLI commands and you immediately see uh, the result of your code change. So running through a pipeline, building your image, there is always a little bit uh, more uh, time into that. But if I think I found it like a fair uh, trade-off. In terms of CI CD, um, so Tecton is not meant to be, uh, at least not in my opinion, an overarching CI system. It's meant to integrate with different CI system, uh, which is, I think, is a good thing. So you can, there is uh, already effort going on to integrate it with um, tools like Jenkins X, or Prow, which is the CI system used by Kubernetes. So the idea is to, it allows you to define reusable blocks. And I think for Tecton to be successful, uh, there is a need of um, a community-driven effort to create really good and nicely tailored and proven tasks and pipelines, which are uh, basically, uh, they define in themselves um, best practices for doing certain tasks. So if Tecton is able to provide this um, proven way of doing things as tasks in your uh, CI or CD system or your development environment, then I think it will be successful. At the moment, uh, the only way you have to reuse a task is actually by copy-pasting that task definition. Uh, we'll see what the future brings. My personal hope would be to have something like um, a way, maybe a resource in your pipeline that allows you to pull in uh, common tasks with the versioning and everything, but this is all to be discussed. Another thing that is nice uh, for CI-CD um, is that Tecton itself has a very small footprint, so it defines its own namespace, and there are two services that run your pipeline. One is uh, just for uh, validation of your resources, and the other one is um, to actually run the, the, the pipelines. On the negative side, it depends on Kubernetes, so you can only run it on Kubernetes, but given how much Kubernetes is spread, widespread, I think it's not so much of a limitation. <coughs> and the other concern is might be security. <coughs> so if you're planning of using uh, Tecton for CI uh, you, and you have your pipeline definition as part of your repository, then you have to be very careful about what you're going to do when someone proposes a changes that actually changes the pipeline itself or the task definition. So you might want to limit who is able to do that uh, or make sure that it's not executed automatically because then you could have malicious user that are actually going and define a pipeline that exposes all your secrets or do things that you don't want to do uh, as done on the, on the cluster. Um, so in terms of roadmap, um, there are a few features for te Tecton that are in the pipeline, conditional execution, uh, proper build result and logs, pluggable tasks, um, further triggers, like a trigger that is actually connected to Kinetic eventing, and as I mentioned, community library would be a very good one to have. Um, some references, um, yeah, this talk is on GitHub. Some links, uh, useful links, hopefully, for Tecton and Knative and Canico and all the code that I used in these uh, demonstrations. So there is just um, one minute left. Sorry about that. But if you have any questions, um, we have a little bit of time. Uh, the question is whether there is a web UI. It's been developed. Uh, if you look into the Tecton CD organization, there is a dashboard, which has been contributed by some folks in IBM, actually, um, that allows you to visually show the, the different components of the pipeline um, yeah, and pull the logs automatically. Because, to be honest, doing by CLI at the moment, it's pretty poor experience. <laughs> it's not meant for human beings. <laughs> 
<coughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the, uh, at the moment, to launch a pipeline, you, you can do it with this kind of glue application. As, soon as any kind of event, if you convert it in a cloud, uh, cloud event, which is a format defined by the CNCF, then yeah, you can use it. It doesn't so matter. Yeah. Yeah. Would you run these uh, CI workloads in the same cluster you run the application, or would you recommend using a separate Kubernetes cluster? Um, I would recommend using separate clusters, to be honest. Um, if you run your pipeline, um, if you tell Knative servi Serving to run your pipeline, they will be in the same cluster. And I think that's good for, de for development purposes, so you just apply your service and then your pipeline is triggered automatically. Uh, but uh, for like CD um, scenarios, or I would separate it, so use the cluster resources, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.